Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier Dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Welcome to the show, puppy parents. We are pumped to hang out with you today. I bet that unforgettable tune made you bop up and down like I'm doing right now. (laughs) (laughs) But you just can't help it. You're doing the Charlie Brown dance. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, Snoopy, Charlie Brown's pet beagle, straight up runs the show in the Peanuts comic strip by Charles M. Scholes. He sure does. And August 10th is Snoopy's honorary birthday. And we want to celebrate the creation of this amazing cartoon dog with you, puppy parents. To celebrate, we've woven together some furry factoids, live clips from our in-person visits to the Shoals Museum in Santa Rosa, California, and our favorite Snoopy moments. Like Jack Russell Terriers, the beloved Snoopy is more than a dog. Almost a person. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> this beagle fights off his arch nemesis, the Red Baron. He fences, flies fighter planes, ice skates, wins Christmas light competitions. He's the master of all things heroic and adventurous. Well, <laughs> mostly in his imagination. Mostly. Like peanuts.fandom.com says, Snoopy is blessed with a rich Walter Mitty like fantasy life. That's a great comparison. <laughs> he is Walter Mitty. <laughs> he is. And that sounds like a typical writer to me, which Snoopy happens to be. He's also a writer above all things. And to be more exact, he's a novelist. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he pounds out those long books. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite. I mean, he writes short novels. More like novellas, perhaps. Oh, okay. He hasn't quite mastered the long form, so. But he uses a typewriter, so. He uses a typewriter, so to be fair, that might be a little harder. So he's known to begin his works with the infamous line, it was a dark and stormy night. And the full comic goes like this. You've got Snoopy sitting, of course, on top of his red doghouse. Can I do the Snoopy part? And you do the Lucy part? Sure. You got Snoopy sitting on top of his red doghouse with his typewriter, and he types. It was a dark and stormy night. And then Lucy approaches. That's a terrible way to begin a story. It's so trite. Once upon a time, that's the way all the good stories begin. She walks away. Do that. Begin your story with once upon a time. Snoopy thinks and then writes, once upon a time, it was a dark and stormy night. (laughs) (laughs) Good grief. (laughs) Good good grief. (laughs) Good grief. Mr. Scholl says Snoopy's whole personality is a little bittersweet, but he's a very strong character. He can win or lose, be a disaster, a hero, or anything, and yet it all works out. I like the fact that when he's in real trouble, he can retreat into a fantasy and thereby escape. Yes. And speaking of escape, we finally got to go on a trip to Northern California to visit my family. I happen to be from the same area that Charles Scholes lived and worked for over 30 years. And I didn't even know that when I was growing up. That's such a shame. It really is. You could have met him. You know, and I think I just didn't make the connection now that I'm thinking about it. Because the ice rink, right, Uh the museum, the ice rink, all of that was there when I was a kid. I went to Snoopy on ice. (laughs) You probably saw him in the grocery store and you didn't even know. (laughs) Didn't make the connection. Uh, But now, on our visit to Santa Rosa, California, we had the privilege of going to the Charles M. Scholes Museum. We had such a great trip. The weather was just beautiful. Oh, Oh, my goodness. Can't say enough about the weather. (laughs) How about you tell everybody about the trip to the museum itself? Okay. Because we can go on and on about the weather and the wineries and all of that. The loveliness, yes. Okay, you ready? Yes. It was a dark and stormy night. (laughs) No, it was. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, it was a bright and mellow morning. Oh, good grief. Okay, well, actually, I think it was a little overcast. (laughs) 
question often is in Sonoma County, but nevertheless. We had a fun time perusing the comics, pictures, and great information at the museum. And there's a lot of fun activities for kids, too. So if you're going to go on a visit with your family, they'll really enjoy this museum. This was our second time to the museum. The first time was a few years ago. And at that time, the featured exhibit was Snoopy. This time around, it was Lucy, which was a surprise to us. Yeah, I didn't realize they switched them out. So as much as I love the sassy pants direct to a fault Lucy, who you happen to... <laughs> She's your spirit animal for sure. <laughs> Shut <laughs> You're like a nicer version of Lucy. <laughs> Anyway, I w- as much as I like her, I was a little bummed Snoopy was no longer featured. Yeah, me too. But we were still able to get some fun information for the trip, for sure. We sure were. We're here live at the Charles Schulz Museum Yay. in Santa Rosa, <laughs> California. And it's been super fun to see all the cool comic strips and how everything developed for him. And they even have this outside garden that's called the Snoopy Labyrinth. <laughs> It's like a maze. (laughs) (laughs) That's shaped like a Snoopy head. We also learned about the progression of the Snoopy character. At first, Snoopy was just a regular dog. Snoopy begins as a cute puppy, always on all fours, casually observing the antics of the kids and peanuts. But he soon starts behaving in unexpected ways, even letting readers in on his thoughts. And in these cartoons, you can notice that Snoopy's word balloon, he has a word balloon above him, and Schultz was still figuring out how to best portray Snoopy's thoughts. Does he talk or does he think? And the word balloon would eventually morph into a thought balloon and be the norm. Next up, we have some fun Snoopy-themed furry factoids. Stay tuned. I had an awesome puppy parent connection the other day. I was rocking my Jack Russell parents t-shirt in the grocery store and because of it, I struck up a great conversation with a lady. And not only did she think my shirt was super cute, she too had a JRT named Wags. And that's a great name. I love it when slogans like dog mom, dog dad, or Jack Russell parents bring people together. Me too. And one of my favorite prints is Jack Russell Terriers. Not a breed, a calling. Yeah, raising a JRT just might be the highest calling of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So are you a proud puppy parent that wants to connect with other puppy parents? Or do you simply like super cute doggy attire to go with your summer shorts? Either way, we have what you need at the Jack Russell Parent Store. All our awesome prints come in a variety of t-shirts, hoodies, baby onesies, laptop sleeves, even coffee mugs. Your choice. To join the doggy squad, check out all the rad merch options at jackrussellparents.com. Simply click on shop at the top and place your order. Go get them, puppy parents! You are going to love these all about Snoopy furry factoids. Peanuts.fandom.com has some of the most silly facts about our good boy, Snoopy. According to Fandom.com, Snoopy was first seen in the comic strip on October 4th, 1950, but his birthday is nationally celebrated on August 10th. Here are some other fun facts. Snoopy loves root beer and pizza. Oh, yes. (laughs) Dog after our own hearts, right? He hates coconut candy and listening (laughs) to balloons being squeezed. Oh, he gets claustrophobia, which keeps him out of tall weeds and even his own doghouse. I had no idea. That's why he always slept on the top. I thought it just looked funny. It's because he's claustrophobic. (laughs) And he's deathly afraid of icicles dangling over his doghouse. Well, that's a legitimate fear. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. One of Snoopy's hobbies is reading Leo Tolstoy's epic novel, War and Peace. At the rate of a word a day. Snoopy also has the uncanny ability to play fetch with soap bubbles and can hear someone eating marshmallows or cookies at a distance. That's very jackish. Yeah. <laughs> and even peeling a banana. Oh, Carson loves bananas too. Mm-hmm. He, he just knows the sound. It, it, <laughs> he comes a running when it's time to eat. 
Snoopy also claims to hear chocolate chip cookies calling him. <laughs> they call me in the night, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just love this dog. And I don't think we can talk about Snoopy without mentioning his best friend and sidekick, Woodstock. So in March 1966, when one of Snoopy's bird friends made their nest on Snoopy's stomach, the mother left the bird nest and did not come back. Snoopy took care of Woodstock and another bird who was born at the same time. Snoopy soon made Woodstock and the other bird fly away, but Woodstock had a lot of trouble flying and soon came back. That's why when he's flying, he's always going into these random, <laughs> like a bee. It's yeah. like all these <laughs> random directions. It's and not a good flyer. Now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> the under-talented bird stayed by Snoopy's doghouse. While at first Snoopy was annoyed by his presence, he soon warmed to him. Soon after Woodstock was officially named on June 22, 1970, Snoopy and Woodstock have become very close friends. Aww. And Woodstock often works as Snoopy's secretary, right? <laughs> <laughs> or his assistant. He's always helping Snoopy. He right. is tru a true sidekick, which was most noticeable when Snoopy was the head beagle. He also is his secretary when Snoopy is assuming the role of the world famous attorney, because Snoopy can do all things. <laughs> he has also worked as Snoopy's mechanic when Snoopy is the World War I flying ace. Oh my goodness. Woodstock also caddies for Snoopy when he plays golf. He has played American football with Snoopy. Usually Woodstock has the most trouble like kicking the ball and catching it. He, you know, he's not very good. He like kicks and spins in circles. And when Snoopy is playing as a helicopter, Woodstock is his pilot. <laughs> okay, so Wo Snoopy is the helicopter. Yeah, his ears like spin and he like I takes off so. like a helicopter. That's what I remember. That's... Yeah. <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> random. These uh. two become inseparable. And it's hard to think of Snoopy without his little yellow bird friend. He's like a little yellow feathered version of R2-D2. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> way to think about it. He, does, he can do all things and he's always there to get you out of a pinch. That jingle means it's time for Insta Dog of the Week. This week, we have Jack Russell Lewis. You can find him at jack.russell.lewis. And he is adorable, of course. He is. I'm all the way down in the good pictures here. So let me scroll back up to the top. So this is what Lewis's description says. He is a Jack Russell Terrier. He was born May 16th, 2020. So he's just a little guy. And it says, our playful, cuddly, and cheeky dog. Cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what's so cute is they have stories across the top. <laughs> They're called walkies, sleeping, playing, funny, yummy. So, like, I love the titles of these stories. The good organization. Yeah. I need to take some lessons. It's very they thought organize. out. Uh, and this little guy is just the cutest. His little Dorito ears kind of stand up really tall, but they're still popped over, like folded over. Explain it. For people who don't know who, what Doritos are, they're triangular crisps. We call them chips here in America. And so oh, yeah. their ears remind <laughs> us of Doritos. So we call them Dorito ears. They look like chips. They, or crisps. Triangular crisps. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is just living his best life. He is out in the, and about in the woods and on walks and in parks, and he's having a really good time. Yeah, he is all kind of outdoors time, it looks like. Yeah, he's a happy guy. Beautiful crunchy side. Crunchy side? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still thinking about chips. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so so Gabe, what's your favorite picture of uh, Lewis? I love this one where he has this giant stuffed toy. It looks like a liquor bottle. And instead of Jack Daniels, it says Jack Russell's on it. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh, it's awesome. It's really hard to pick a favorite. They've captured him with his tongue sticking out, like he's sticking his tongue out at you. And there's a couple of those that are really cute. Then there's also these really cute ones of him with a stick. He's running with a stick in his mouth. And I think those are so cute because they remind me, you know, when Carson was younger, he loved sticks too. And he would pick one up and just carry it for the longest time on a walk or he'd chew it. Um, he's not as interested in sticks anymore, but it was really cute when he did that when he was little. So I really liked those photos. And sometimes he would get huge 
they weren't sticks anymore. They were a, a literal branch. Yeah. A <laughs> yeah. huge branch, three times his length, and he's just dragging it along. Yeah. So Lewis is the cutest little guy. Y'all got to come on over to Instagram and check him out. Like his page. Follow him. Again, it's at jack.russell.lewis, L-O-U-I-S. <laughs> Back at the museum. Well, that was fun. What was your favorite part? <laughs> Honestly, I liked the movie. <laughs> we, got to, we got to watch a Snoopy movie. You're in love, Charlie Brown. Yeah, that's what we like. I like they brought all the stuff from his office. You see his actual desk and his actual chair. And it's really cool. There was a great write-up on the wall in the museum with some insightful comments from Scholes himself. Gabe, why don't you share that with us? Sparky, which was Charles M. Scholl's nickname, says his studio was the center of his working life, a refuge where he often talked with friends and fellow cartoonists and the place where the penis was created. Recreated in this gallery is the working area that existed in his studio at one Snoopy place. His address was one Snoopy place. (laughs) It's awesome. The drawing board on display is one he used for over half of his career. So the, the tilted desk where he drew, he actually used it. And you could see like where it's worn Just constant, constant use. Yep. The desk was a gift from his wife, Jean, in 1973. The drawing tools Scholes used are within easy reach of his workspace, and the studio shelves are filled with books, albums, gifts, photos, and memorabilia. This is all his real stuff. The desk, the, the, the drawing desk, his bookshelves with his books, it's all there. It's really interesting. And that was our Snoopy. Yeah, I mean, to actually see and and kind of feel what it was like to be in his workspace creating this cartoon, it, it was just, it's just really meaningful. Which one critic said is quite possibly the longest story ever told by one human being. Wow. So, because I mean, it's just so ongoing. It's just, yeah, longer than The Simpsons. <laughs> just on wow. and on and on That's and on. Awesome. The same characters developing. Yeah. Scholes also said that the comic strip can be an extremely creative endeavor. On its highest level, we find a wonderful combination of writing and drawing, generally done by one man sitting at a drawing board in a room all by himself, much the same as a composer sitting at a piano or a writer crouched over his typewriter. And that's just it. A little dance that this one person does and creates, and it's really beautiful. It's awesome. Scholz's comic strip really was and still is part of our daily lives, and I love that his scope reaches across the globe. Eventually, Peanuts was circulated in 75 countries and translated into more than 25 languages, even Braille. Charles Scholz was amused when he learned of the different names given to his comic strip in other countries. Snoopy y Carlitos in Spain, Snobbin in Sweden, and Radicern, the Danish word for peanuts, in Denmark. He understood the potential problems for translating American idioms, but that didn't worry him. As a matter of fact, he quipped, I'm sure there are people in the United States who don't understand me. (laughs) (laughs) And when the Moscow News and English Language Weekly published Peanuts reprints without permission in 1973, Scholz frankly responded, if that's the only way I can get published in Russia, it's all right with me. I guess it's better to be stolen than not to be worth stealing. What? (laughs) That's so cool. It's amazing how all these characters, even Snoopy, can impact us on a personal level and even a global one. So how has the penis cartoon and Snoopy impacted you, Becca? Well, you know, the cartoon as a whole and the Snoopy character bring together all the things really that I love about life the most. I tend to have a rich imagination. I live in my head a lot, just like Snoopy. (laughs) I love to write and create, and I understand Snoopy's struggle to get more than two paragraphs out at a time. He's a little bit of an ornery snot at times, (laughs) and I can be too. (laughs) I can be too. But he is also very loving and a true friend to Woodstock, and that is inspiring. Um, Yes, I am inspired by a cartoon dog. Yeah, and a beagle, I feel like, is the closest comparison to a Jack Russell in terms of temperament and attitude and Mm -hmm. snottiness and Mm -hmm. lovability and loyalty. They're very similar. They are. 
What's your favorite aspect? My favorite aspect of Snoopy is that he's always showing up Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, in Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, when everyone goes to France, Snoopy flies first class and gets to go into the VIP lounge. <laughs> In Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, the summer camp movie, Charlie gets left behind by the bus twice and gets rescued by Snoopy on his souped up motorcycle twice. <laughs> <It's> a motorcycle. <laughs> he drives a motorcycle with Woodstock and he, they make room for Charlie Brown uh-huh. on it. Uh, in Charlie Brown Christmas, of course, Snoopy wins first place in the Christmas decoration contest while Charlie just has that busted up little tree, <laughs> which they rescue with Snoopy's decorations and makes it beautiful. Uh-huh. Yeah, Snoopy often saves the day for Charlie Brown. And he's way more popular, too, among all the friends. I know. And that's just like us with Carson, right? So whenever we take Carson anywhere, we just like kind of become invisible and everyone's like, hey, Carson, what's up, Carson? How you doing, Carson? And we're like... (laughs) Do you even know our names? Yeah, I don't think anyone outside of our immediate family knows our first names. Yeah, I well, yeah. Uh, Well, thank you so much for listening. As we say, happy happy birthday, birthday, Snoopy. Snoopy. It just goes to show you, dogs of all kinds, even hand-drawn ones, can warm our hearts. We had a blast celebrating one of the most famous dogs in pop culture history. And we absolutely loved sharing this wonderful rendition, Linus and Lucy, a.k.a. the Peanuts theme song, which you're hearing right now. A big, big shout out to Tom Conlon for giving us permission to share his awesome work. You can find Tom Conlon at youtube.com slash TomCon21 or on Instagram at TomCon21. Go check out all of his legit and skillful work. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun, dog-loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. (laughs) We'd love to connect with you online at jackrusselparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier podcast. The Jack Russell Parents podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrusselparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.